Welcome back to The New Perspective. My name is Rena Risper, and you are listening to MichiganBusinessNetwork.com. I am in the studio with Sharon Lang. She is the project director of Try Jazz. And just by mere uh, mentioning of, of the title of the um, event, um, there must have been something, Sharon, that went into it. So tell me how this all began. You know, really, really fun, and we, we go into the store, it's, it's quite comical in our website and talk to everyone about how that came about about four years ago, a uh, cold wintry night in Lansing. Great friend of ours and our developing partner, Derek Gardner, was over. So and Derek you know, Gardner story, is? Pardon? Derek Gardner is? Derek Gardner is a professor of jazz music, uh, international recording artist. At one point, was a professor of jazz music at Michigan State University, and he has now moved on to the University of Manitoba, Winnipeg, Canada, where he has the uh, great challenge and I think excitement of helping to develop Canada's first comprehensive jazz studies program wow. uh, for their nation. So Derek is a phenomenal artist who uh, has toured with incredible names and has just a lot of, of history and professional expertise. And this pro this um, program came about um, due to a conversation that you two were having over coffee and... Even better, it was in front of a warm <laughs> fireplace with a glass of red wine. <laughs> that does sound, that does sound better. And it That's must have been such an amazing more. opportunity to um, create this um, program. I keep saying program, but but I need to let people know that it's kind of like a program event, like learning opportunity. Um, for me, it you know when you were explaining to me, it was so interactive in my mind that um, going from phase to phase to phase. So tell us a little bit about how it became an idea and process that it took to get it to where it is today. Sure. You know, Derek, Derek has a unique challenge as being a, a very well-learned, well-traveled, amazing performer um, in the straight-ahead jazz genre. So he's a very hardcore jazzer. And, you know, it, it's tough because in the marketplace, only about 3% of music consumed is in the jazz field. And so there are questions about jazz sustainability, although, ironically, every major university in our entire country has a jazz studies program, and very few musics are represented at that level. There's always the question for jazz people, and how do we get people to try jazz? How do we get them to engage in jazz? You know, we love it. It's artistic. It's historic. It's a representation of the human spirit. It has all kinds of um, organic and emotional representation. And in the highest level of expertise and artists. So, how do we do that? How do we get people to try it? And it's hard. You know, you can't dance to this music very well. You know, and there are some offshoots that are better, but for the most part, you know, there aren't very many lyrics, so you can't sing to it. And so, the normal way that music connects with people sometimes are absent in jazz, and it, it takes a while to develop the palette for it. And so, as we sat, uh, Derek being this incredible international performing artist and educator. My husband has a jazz master's and has taught jazz and performed for over 25 years. And then I myself have a background in education and at the time was the director of a jazz festival and working sort of in the industry of jazz. So there we sat as a group and went, you know, there's the question. How, how do we do it? How do we get people to try it so that they can feel safe and they can enjoy it and not have jazz be intimidating? And then from there, over the course of the last four years, we literally have opened that conversation to friends, to fellow performers, to producers, to just normal people, who, and to skeptics, people who don't even like the genre, and, you know, help us understand what it would take. And we've wrapped all of those conversations and educational moments into this great experience that we're hoping to share with people. And so explain how it's going to um, pan out all of this um, research and conversation that you had you know, actually, again, came up to these um, different um, spaces. So mm -hmm. um, jazz is blue, jazz is funk, jazz is soul, jazz is now. How did mm -hmm. you come up with those three, those four? It, you explained it briefly in the beginning, but you have to, what does it mean to to you as the project director of this event? So jazz is blue means 
jazz will be infused with blues? Does jazz um, is funk? Does that mean it will be infused with funk? Hmm. Actually, quite the reverse. Okay. Um, what we would, yeah, and, and I think those four genres to start with, because they're really, they're close relatives, you know, and it's a little bit more obvious to detect and to hear jazz in those music forms than, say, for us to tackle jazz as country. And, and even though it's there, a lot of um, shifting has happened in the music and the form and the rhythm and the time and what happens. And even though, you know, it's sort of a distant relative, and it's, but it's very close for those other roots genres, uh, soul, funk, R&B, hip-hop, even rap music. And so rather than make jazz the focal point and make people come to it and then just sort of show them a little bit of the other, we're going to switch that around and we're going to say, okay, we're going to put on a blues event because you recognize the blues audience, you appreciate the blues, you dance, you know these songs, it's familiar to you, you enjoy it. But while they're in that blues space, we are going to have phenomenal jazz artists demonstrate for you and About your ears the blues. how jazz improvisation is there. That sounds like a plan. And after the break, we'll talk a little bit more about the blues. <laughs> 